Well, the last time our guest uh, Mike Gordon was with us, it was early April, and he was about to take off across the U.S. and Canada for his Broken Hallelujah Tour. And uh, we fast forward from April 14th to June 28th. He has completed the tour. And while on the tour, because of your generosity, we gave him 100 of these Generation at Risk box sets to give to youth leaders all across the continent. He's back to give us an update about Broken Hallelujah, hallelujah yep. and as well how the tour was. Yeah, Mike, thank you. Welcome back, Mike. Yeah, thank you for having me back. Uh, you, I, you captured my heart when you were here before. We had such a great time together. Yeah. Uh, you, you are actually one of the most requested speakers in, in the country. Mm -hmm. you're, and, and man, you move. You, move. <laughs> so you're, you go from in the summertime from one youth camp to the next. Yes. And you're going from high schools and universities and festivals. Bouncing everywhere. You're yeah. going to the what's the big event that's coming up? Uh, uh, next week we'll be at Kingdom Bound down in the U.S. Lecrae is that there. Lecrae, Newsboys, all those uh, good guys. So Look that'll out. be fun. Yeah. yeah. Tens of thousands will be at that. Yeah, they, they, they can be a few people, yes. Yeah, yeah, good for you, good yeah. for you. Tell us about Broken Hallelujah. How, yeah, how, just yeah. give us a, you're here to give us an update. How'd it go? It went, it went incredible. Um, first of all, to be asked to speak anywhere, it's just an honor. Um, so the Broken Hallelujah tour, we had about 50, uh, 50 speaking engagements through, uh, so two months or whatnot. What a tour. Yeah, bouncing around from, you know, different, uh, different places, places. Did you wake place. up in the middle of the night in your hotel room and not know what town you were in? There, there, that happens, that happens, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, it, it's great. And, and the idea behind the tour is sometimes um, I kind of look at my life. Yeah. What am I learning? Uh, and with the mindset, I can't be the only one, you know, learning these things. So the idea of Broken Hallelujah is, in life, you know, Jesus says, in this world you will have trouble. And what's our response in the trouble? And it's interesting um, how that works. So you can come to me and say, hey, Mike, I've been diagnosed with an illness. Can you pray for me? And my response to God in that moment is, oh, God, like, can you, can you, you know, heal John? You know, I go to God in faith and, and, and without a doubt that he's able and stronger and can overcome anything. But it's funny when, if I go through the same illness in life, it's funny how my response to God completely changes because sometimes I begin to doubt God or question, like, why am I going through this? Why are you allowing this to happen? Uh, do you actually love me? Like, do you care for me? If but you, you have the confidence that God could do that for another. Yeah, and you'll it, say, oh, it, I'll pray for you, but then it comes it's to you. One of you, it's a different yeah, story yeah, sometimes. Good and observation. So the idea of broken hallelujah in the midst of our brokenness, how do we respond? Like, how, how do we um, go about life in the midst of maybe not understanding why exactly these things happen? Now, obviously, in this world, I think we can understand why there's trouble. I can't explain why certain people go through certain degrees of trouble, uh, why someone deals with this and someone else doesn't. Uh, for example, yesterday I was at a funeral service for, for a friend of mine. I don't understand why that family goes through that and this family uh, doesn't. So in the midst of your brokenness, I think sometimes we start asking the why. God, why are you allowing this to happen? And in life, sometimes we get that answer, sometimes we don't. And I think sometimes when we don't get the answer, we try to use our own mindset to understand, come up with our own conclusions. So, Mike, why is this so important? With, and why is this message resonating with young people? Yeah, well, I think, yeah, for young people, for sure. Um, I think as we grow, and, and especially with young people, they're, they walk with God when they're in teenage, you know, university and whatnot. They're kind of coming out of their parents' faith. You know, for maybe some of them that grew up in the church and whatnot, and it's all about, been about their parents, their parents, and parents. And now they're really starting to take hold of, like, their Christian walk, you know, on their own. So they start doing this, and when they experience, you know, trouble, for a lot of us, if you don't get the why answer, you see young people, they're turning to other things in this world. They're turning to other things that might uh, maybe satisfy them or fulfill them or, or help them in trouble because they feel for whatever reason, God has let them down. God has, you know, given up on them, avoided them. And for my years in ministry, you know, speaking as well as pastoring, um, I feel like in these situations in life where you can't really explain it, but the kids are hurt, they're broken, they're going through, you know, pain and heartbreak, they use this as a season to almost justify, well, this is my reason to walk away from God. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many people I have seen walk away from God in these moments. So the passion of this tour, the message was, listen, your circumstances do not reflect how much God loves you. And just because life is not going the way you want or expect and you're hurting, 
It doesn't mean God has stopped loving you. You know, one of the observations I've had in, in, in my life is that how sad it is you'll see people that are in their mid-40s still living their life based on decisions they made when they were 16. That's true. Isn't that interesting? That it is. And they probably wouldn't do that in any other area except when it relates to, to, to faith in God. I agree. All right, let's, uh, in, the, in the time we have left, we were so impressed by the tour mm -hmm. uh, that we made this available to you. This actually, this DVD, four, uh, four DVD set of documentaries that we've produced here yes. was made possible by our donors last September that gave, a, gave gifts of $100 mm -hmm. to get these units into the hands of leaders like you. Mm -hmm. Tell us what you did with these documentaries, who you gave them to, yes. and, and how they were being received. Yeah, the beautiful part is, you know, when you get to bounce around from church to church and have the opportunity to go in many different doors, you meet tons of people, you meet tons of leaders. And, you know, with, with this DVD, first of all, thank you for that donation. Yeah, we thank, well, we thank, thank our, you. we thank our partners. Exactly. Friends. Yeah, and, uh, and this talks on real things, yeah. you know, what teenagers are actually dealing with. Um, I'm a little older than I look. I'm still young, but, you know, hanging in there. Um, but I don't know what it's like to be a teenager anymore. I don't know what it's like to be in that world no. and, and going through these things. And this, this DVD here, giving it to the leaders, um, it can help give, give them an idea of what they're battling, what they're really facing. Yeah, the painkillers, uh, violence, uh, sexual messages, yeah. and uh, in the texting world, yes. world, and then as well, uh, teen, teen suicide. It, it, so the topics resonated with the youth leaders. 100%. It's completely... Uh, totally uh, connected with uh, youth leaders and giving them something to help equip them to reach out to the youth and that they're working with on a daily basis right. and, and whatnot. And, and one story even that came out of it was uh, one church we did connect with. Uh, there was a girl who was, was battling, you know, suicide. And a uh, six-year process of just not knowing, you know, why God's allowing this stuff to happen. And in the midst of, you know, this tour, in the midst of these resources, in the midst of understanding um, she kind of came to this idea, like, I need to stop blaming God for all this sort of stuff. I don't have to turn to these things. Suicide is not the answer. Like, you know, all those things are not the answer. Drugs, painkillers, they're not the answer. Uh, let's not run away from God. Let's run to God. So giving this resource to different leaders and, and different pastors around the city to help them understand the world that they're going to, I think just help them um, you know, be yeah. with them, walk them through, and, and, a, and yeah. talk them through. And they, have a a and they have a resource that they can share with their youth groups. Exactly. And, uh, and, and, and not just in the way these are designed, not only with Christian youth groups, but as well uh, crossover audiences, yes. if you will, or secular audiences. Mike, we're so proud of you. Thank you. I know you distributed 100 of these yes. to, to youth leaders. Thank you for that. Thank you. We look forward to hearing you uh, again, having you back again and I again. I love that. And, and let me just say to you, uh, thanks, buddy. Oh, thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Let me, let me just say to you again, thank you for those of you who gave almost a year ago. You may remember when I asked and you responded just so magnanimously. Um, if you would like to get a copy of this, uh, you can simply go to crossroads.ca. You can click there and you have a choice. You can make a donation and have of uh, $100 and you can have this sent to uh, a youth leader in your name and in their honor as a gift. Or you can simply make a, a gift of $100 and get this for yourselves. Four world-class documentaries. Please, crossroads.ca. Mike, thanks again, buddy.